So okay guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make something like this, or this, or perhaps even this using nothing more than a free program called EB Synth. Correction, we're going to be using EB Synth and a photo editor of your choice. I'm going to be using Karita, but you can pretty much stick with anything. You can use Photoshop or GIMP, anything works. Essentially, what you need to know about EB Synth is you download it, it will look something like this. You just double click it and run it. Clearly, I'm on Linux and the GUI version works just fine. However, there are also CLI versions available, so if you'd rather run this from the terminal, that can be done as well. But I'm going to try to make this video pretty neutral for those of you running on Windows as well as those of you running on Linux. But with that said, you just double click the EXE, you get something like this. And from here, we essentially have to get our video and split it into images. Now you may be wondering why we need to do this. Well essentially, once this video here has been turned to images, what you gotta do is edit one of the images into whatever style you desire. Now you can either style it in such a way that it looks like an animated animation, or you could style it in such a way to maybe remove a background poster, give yourself facial hair, as long as it conforms to whatever shape it is that you're editing, it will apply over top the video just fine. Think about it like this, you have a dry erase marker and a ceramic plate. You draw on the plate, you pour water on it, it liquefies the dry erase marker and it can move around. Essentially, that's what we do. We edit the one keyframe, it liquefies, it moves around on top of the video. It kind of waits to it just like it would a rig in Blender. So there are some variables such as weight we can play with. So if the default weights don't work, play with these numbers till you get a result you like. But we're getting too far ahead of ourselves. How would we go about splitting our video into keyframes that EB Synth can recognize. Well, I'm gonna be doing this a bit different. Unlike people that would use Premiere or perhaps even Photoshop, I'm gonna be using a free program called FFMPG. The command should look something like this. I am working on scripts to do everything for you, so if you want scripts to do all this, down below in the description are script files that you can download and use on your Linux machine. I'll also try to make some batch programs as well that will work on Windows. Anyway, the main requirement is you have FFMPEG available. You essentially need to open up a terminal, or if you have the script, just run the script wherever your video's at, and it should work once I get it working fine. But for now, we're gonna do this thing manually. So now that I opened a terminal up here, all I gotta essentially do is uh, copy this command, paste it in here, and then you can change the input file format. In my case, I'm just gonna put that 2022 something file name in there. Uh, this is also very important th at the end here. If your video is a uh, 30 frame rate, you want to make sure it's a 30 out of 1, 60 out of 1 if it's 60, and vice versa. I'm also going to get rid of this word out here because it's very unnecessary. We want only the keyframes numbered. We don't want anything extraneous in there that might throw EB synth, synth off. So that should be my full command there. I'm going to hit enter and that will split our video quite quickly into keyframes. In fact, a lot of keyframes, because this is rather a pretty long video for a demo. I probably should have chose something else that was a little bit less complex. But yeah, there you go. Also, this part's pretty much for Linux users, so if you're not running Linux, just ignore this and skip ahead of a timestamp. I do want to quickly show how to install FFMPEG, although most likely it's already pre-installed on your system. Just do sudo pacman or sudo app-get. Then you want to do attack s with the pacman anyway, and then type in FFMPEG, and that should download the correct FFMPEG version. But yeah, now that we got our video into keyframes, I'm going to do some uh, video editing magic here to make this look a little bit more seamless, as well as not to drag on the video. I've already took a keyframe, I believe it's like keyframe 58, so I'm going to go back. As you can see, there's our video, it's in this video folder, all split up into keyframes. What you need to do now is make a folder called key. This will be the edited keyframe. And you want to copy that keyframe from the video in here that you wish to edit. In this case, I'm going to copy this. Then go in here, paste it in here, and then from there we can go into Photoshop and edit it. As you can see, I just saved on top of it. 
And since these are the same keyframes, believe it or not, I think, well, close enough, all I essentially did was uh, draw on top of it, save it over top the original keyframe in here, and that was basically it. Now, since we've done that, as soon as we throw this into EB Synth, it will style our video to look something similar to this. I just had to rename the name there because I realized I did these exported without the out name in front of it. So yeah, that's very important. Make sure your keyframe name still matches the keyframe name in the video folder. Another thing to note, if you have a scene with a lot of moving action, you may need to do more than one keyframe. In this particular video, I think I needed to do two. However, just for example reasons, I'm going to only do it with one. Alright, so now that we have our video and key folders here, all you got to do is just drag your video folder into EBSynth, right into the video marking spot. Then you want to take your key folder, drag it into EBSynth, right into the keyframe slot. If done correctly, it should already make a project directory, it should change the keyframe location and the video location, and you should have new options down below. So what you see here is essentially where we're going to be saving our file or our output to, and we're also going to have a slightly simplified timeline. So if you only wanted to modify your video scene at keyframe 58, you can edit your beginning clip all the way up to that keyframe clip and start from there. Same here, if you didn't want the video to be edited all the way to the end, you can easily adjust the stopping point. Anyway, since I want EB Synth to run through basically the whole video, I'm going to leave the timeline as is. This should be fine, and it should just render everything A-OK. -okay. However, if you have some problems, you can adjust the weight to see if that helps. You can also change this up to utilize masking as well. However, what I like to do the most when it comes to this program is export my, uh, files into ping format. That can be easily done by just changing the output format here to ping, for instance. Then you can make a transparency keyframe, and then your whole video can be real transparent. But enough about that, I'm getting off topic again. If you have everything done correctly, it should look something like this, and you could just hit synth. That will begin spitting out our new keyframes into a new folder. Typically this folder will be named after the keyframe name. However, I renamed mine to rendered. So if I go into the rendered folder, you can see here it is now rendering our project. I'm going to manually hit refresh so you can see that this is indeed spitting out images. As you can see there are now two. It might take it a little bit longer to run because I believe this program is quite CPU dependent or GPU dependent. I can't quite recall. And I'm sure recording is also slowing this down. But as you can see, it's doing rather a particularly good job considering I don't think this uh, particular project was designed to work with one keyframe. Now depending on whatever it is you shoot, some of these glitches and things that might come up from EBSynth might be exactly what you're looking for. Again, if you have too many problems, try playing around with the weight, or perhaps editing a keyframe that's in that problematic area, then re-rendering it and mixing the two projects together. Another thing to note, EB Synth is not magic. I'll have an example up on screen. If your scene is dark and you try to animate it, it will lose tracking. Much like having a tracking suit on, rigging something for a video game, you want those tracking points to be visible, so the more light you have when filming will help this process out a lot. But yeah guys, I didn't even scratch the surface when it came to things you can do with this program. If you had a subject that had a shirt on that was very inappropriate or something, you can go and completely replace the shirt out if you wished. You can make your face look completely different. I'm not saying this is a deep faking program. Your face shape still has to match, but if your face is very similar to somebody else's and you do face swapping, then put a face swapped keyframe in, you can essentially look completely different. But yeah, this video isn't quite done yet. You may be wondering, now that we got the keyframes, how do we put those back into, well, a video? 
Well, that's simple enough. I do have a script here. However, this same script will work on Windows within command line, so I'll have a batch file hopefully as well. I'm gonna quickly open it up and show you guys what's in this sh file. Essentially, we're telling ffmpg to recompile these images back into a 30 frame rate. And from here, we wanted to grab pings as our output format to merge back into a mp4. As it stands right now, this script does work, so I'm gonna quickly open up this folder and have it preemptively typed for when this is done rendering out. But yeah, that's the command you use if you're following along on Linux and you downloaded my script file. You just type that in and essentially once this is all rendered and I hit enter, it will automatically recombine it into an, a, a file called out.mp4. But yeah, I'm gonna wait and I'll get back with you guys when this thing is done. So alright guys, now that that is done rendering the PNG files, let's now combine those PNGs back into a video file. As you can see, that took no time at all compared to rendering the project. However, I do want to specify one thing because I forgot about it and I thought about it while this was rendering. You can output in two different formats, so if you didn't want to ping, just change that to a JPEG extension. But yeah, I also found out that this was running off of my CPU the whole time, meaning while I was recording audio and video, it made this run a little bit slower, so it took me a fair bit of time, although most cases this thing will render out a project in no time at all. Anyway, just as a proof of concept, now that we've recombined all these pings into a mp4, it will spit out the mp4 in the directory of the ping, so I'm gonna cut that and move it here. And now we're gonna play this. There's one thing to note, audio does not transfer over, obviously, because these are just the keyframes. So if you wanted audio, you'll have to cut out the audio from the original clip, and then put it under the track of this video file. But yeah, I am quite surprised how well this turned out with just one edited keyframe. Feel free to edit more keyframes in your video. EB Synth should automatically identify them and pick up on it. And also, if you do get any errors anywhere you want instead of having to re-render the whole project, just delete the problem areas in your uh, frames here, I should say, or let me think about how to phrase this. Go to your rendered folder, just delete the keyframes that are messed up, edit the keyframe where it starts to mess up to be different, then re-render it from said messed up keyframe. Let's say we mess up around 84, this looks pretty awful, we want to fix that. So we could just delete everything from 84 all the way up to the end of our video clip or wherever it's messed up, change this to the starting keyframe, we want it to be 84, starting keyframe 84, all the way to the end. It sounds confusing, but trust me, as you play with this program, it will make a lot of sense, and it will save you a lot of time. In fact, a lot of animators use this program to make quick and dirty, really fast animations. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you followed everything correctly, you should easily be able to convert any video of your choosing into an animated art style, or just any style that you desire. But before I go, down below in the description will be those script files I told you about for both Windows and Linux. Hopefully I'll have the Windows ones done soon, as well as the EB Synth program itself. I'll also archive the program file. That way if this site ever goes offline for whatever reason, I'll have the executable readily available still for those of you that want it. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video, and I'm gonna leave this off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. I'm gonna type sudo, then mount, then I want to type in slash dev for device, then slash description as well as have them ungrouped. That way you can easily adjust these to fit any watch that you desire.